fashion insider friends. What is up? This is the Fashion Crimes Podcast, where I cover all things fashion, style, shopping, style inspiration, and interview incredible small business owners who are changing the fashion industry for the better. Yes, I'm the best friend you never knew you needed and the poster child for fashion over 40. And I mean, way after 40. Say it with me, fashion and style are your friends, not your enemies. I'm Holly Cates, your favorite personal stylist, and let's keep it real, the only Holly you need to know. Turn it up, because I got a lot to say, and I am super stoked you're here. Fashion besties, I am so happy that you dropped in this week to see what's happening here at the Fashion Crimes Podcast Beat Laboratory. Did you know that it's the 150th birthday of Levi's 501 jeans. Did you? Did you know? Well, just so you know, I had some very important fashion people ask me to comment on the staying power and timeless style of the iconic Levi's 501s, which was the very first style of Levi jeans that date all the way back to 1873. Yes, you heard that right. Often imitated, never duplicated. The original 501 jeans by Levi's have stayed true and timeless for well over 150 years. 150 years, it's a long time. And they're not stopping anytime soon. From rebels to kooks to factory and mill workers, rockers and farmers alike, the 501 jeans actually gets cooler and hipper the older and more worn that they appear. So throughout their history, There was no social class or gender or religion or creed that 501s did not fit. Withstanding the ebb and flow of the fashion cycle, because y'all know the fashion cycle goes on like 20 to 30 years through the decades, what's in, what's out. These jeans have been the one thing that Americans can always agree are quintessentially cool. So when you wear 501s, you're not pigeonholed into any demographic other than being part of the Levi's revolution and what a revolution it is. This style is still true today to the original 501 core values of price, craftsmanship, and durability, and is now coupled with Levi's modern sustainability efforts. All righty then. I mean, you cannot destroy a pair of Levi jeans, right? They will last through any nuclear explosion, thousands of years, I'm sure thousands of years from now, people will be finding 501 jeans maybe buried in some campsite somewhere, but they will never die. Back in the late 19th century, miners and factory workers, they needed a pant that was sustainable enough to withstand the harsh elements in addition to keeping their shape and durability over time. Levi Strauss was a Jewish immigrant who sailed to New York City in pursuit of the American dream, of course, from Bavaria, Germany. He joined his family in the dry goods business where he was selling what was called, and I'm using air quotes here, waist overalls, which was the first name for denim pants. Then a tailor from Reno, his name was Jacob Davis. He was the one that actually wrote to Strauss, wrote him a legit letter. And he said, hey, by the way, I put these copper rivets on the corners of the pants for uh, the pockets for reinforcement. From there, they were awarded a patent of this process of adding the actual rivets and started to manufacture them in San Francisco because that's where Strauss was living. The first lady, I'm using air quotes again, Lady Levi's, they were not invented until 1934. And even the children's coveralls, they had been manufactured for years before ladies got any denim pants. It also wasn't until the 1960s that teenagers started to call the coveralls, they started to call them jeans. And that name just stuck. I don't know where it came from. It's just what they were called. Then other styles were invented, like the first wrinkle-free slacks as they crossed over into sportswear. And the stretch and the white labels of Levi's were introduced. And of course, in the 1970s, the bell-bottom style was born. The 501 now is the oldest style of Levi's, of course, and it's actually the first style ever invented. But today, the company boasts a collection of over 400 styles and rinses to date. So when I say rinses, that means colors. 
The Levi's company is using their birthday to bring forth their efforts on becoming more sustainable and using less energy and water to produce and dye their products. In additional fashion news, expect to hear about the release of the plant-based, you heard that right, plant-based 501s that are made from 97% renewable resources. Now, I don't know what that means, but we're going to find out because I'm going to get a pair. Learning about this company and its practices, I'm telling you, y'all, I was reading, they have won award after award after award after the groups that they have introduced and their practices. They're one of the first innovators in their efforts to become more diverse. They were the first company that ever did that. I mean, the money that they donate, that's too high to count to all charities all over America, starting their own foundations within their company to support workers with disabilities, Family Leave Act, the Equal Disability Act. The list goes on and on about the global awards they've won in addition to their work supporting and finding a cure for AIDS and the money that they've donated towards AIDS research. Levi's is always a product that is consistent and that you can find on a sliding scale starting from under $100. Can't say that much anymore. I have always loved Levi's and I will continue to recommend them to my clients. It is men, women, kids alike. That is always going to be one of the first jeans that I recommend. They're always in style for everybody. It's a family product that's actually cool and not taboo because anyone from adults to kids can wear it of any age. So as most styles always come back around second or an even third time, this generation, which is Gen Z, kids are discovering the gene for the first time. Of course, they're trending on TikTok, duh, which has made the style the newest it style for the Gen Zers. And it's also the hype of the birthday and the brand and things like that. Collectors of this brand share their styling tips on social media over all channels, or they buy and resell them for up to thousands of dollars, especially in different countries with Japan as home to some of the most elite and specialized collectors. So, Avi, the next question is, what jeans are best for you? Which ones are most trending? And what brands do I think are best? So glad you asked. I have currently addressed this before, talked about it a long, long time ago for a while, but let's, of course, talk about the most important factor before you purchase anything. You have to shop for fit first. You can have a price range in mind. However, you need to buy a jean because of the fit and the way it looks on your body, not just because you have a certain price point that you don't want to go over. The basic structure of a jean and garment details you should take into account, I want you to think about this when you buy your next pair of jeans, the rise, the stretch factor, the support, the rinse, and the price. Now, I want you to notice that I said price last. And also notice how I did not say inseam. That would be great if you got the correct inseam every single time you wanted to buy a pair of jeans. However, most of the time, they're probably going to be too long especially if you have short girl syndrome like me, but that should not deter you from purchasing. So going over the garment details so you are better armed and knowledgeable to buy your next pair of jeans. Here we go. The first one is the rise. The rise is the distance from your crotch. So if you go in between your legs and that point where all of the panels connect, you go from there to the very t- going up the back to the top of your waistband, up through your seat, okay? That is the rise. That determines where the pants sit on your body and can create or alter where your perceived waistline is. Now, high-rise jeans, that's going to sit above or at your natural waist. So just so you know, in case you don't know where your natural waist is, that is directly below your rib cage, above your belly button, the smallest part of your midsection. So if you get a pair of high-waisted jeans, they should sit on your belly button or above. Low-rise jeans, they sit on or below the top of your hips. So if you hit the top of your hip bone and you get draw a line straight over directly to your belly button right underneath, that's where your low-rise jeans should hit. Mid-rise is anything in between that. 
usually a few inches below your belly button. Just know a higher rise jean is always going to flatter your figure more and give you the illusion of curves where there are none. These are always my number one pick as well for anyone who is curvy like myself. When purchasing jeans, brands that I think are great for my body type and beyond, here are the brands that I like. Mother, Legence, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Frame, Page, Rag and Bone, and Guess. Yeah, I said it. I said it. Guess. Okay. I was shopping for a client in Macy's and I saw a huge display of Guess jeans. I was like, um, girl, okay, what? The skinny jeans with the zippers on the on the ankles, those must be back in. Um, excuse me, I got two pair of jeans that are my absolute favorite, not the ones that are skinny with the zippers on the ankles. However, guest jeans are back. I can't believe it. One fit I got was a skinny jean, and another fit I got was a, called a mom jean. The mom jeans are my favorite. Not your daughter's jeans, which is called NYDJ. They are a consistent product that have the stomach support that most people need if that's what you're looking for. If you're thick in the middle and you want some stomach support, that's a great jean for you. I also personally, I wear Wranglers. They've been around forever too. Their stretch denim is amazeballs. Love them. I have the shorts as well. But I live in the South, so wearing Wranglers works for me. I've always worn Wranglers. I'm never going to stop. And of course, Levi's, which I have literally worn since high school. They have been around the longest and they are my go-to. I've heard good things about good American jeans as well. I just haven't tried them. I have recommended them to clients, but I have not tried them myself. The great thing about jeans is that you can wear them year round and they're never going to go out of style, regardless of what any magazine or publication or any style expert says. I don't care if it's on the fucking news or billboard or in your head. Whatever style of jean works best for you is never out of style. I will never not wear high-waisted jeans. I don't care if they're in style or out of style. So don't trip on what jeans are in or out or what people say, right, or in or out. I've had a lot of people ask me, are skinny jeans out? Are they out? Bitch, no, they're not out. They're not out if that's what you like. Is it what people are showing now? No, they're not. They're showing everything Y2K from the 90s. They're showing flare jeans, low rise jeans. I'm not wearing that shit. Okay. I do have one pair of low rise jeans. So I was like, oh, maybe I can pull them off. I can't. I've worn them a couple of times. They're fine, but it's just not that deep. I don't love them, but I do have them. Okay. So I did try. Jeans that fit your body correctly are never out of style. So if jeans are your thing, if you have a place in your life where you can wear jeans all the time, please invest in jeans that help you out, that flatter your body, and make you feel confident. That's what clothes are supposed to do for you, not make you want to hide or strip you of feeling good. Keep this in mind. If you're wearing something that doesn't make you feel good, it's not the right clothing for you. I get questions time and time again about what to wear with jeans, and it really does depend on the look that you're going for. Jeans are accepted now, whether we like it or not, more than ever in the workplace. And they're seen in street style and high-end fashion ads and pictures everywhere you turn. It's almost like they're in the same category as black pants, if you ask me. Everyone has them, everyone wears them, and depending on what industry you're in, everyone is wearing them. Ever since COVID, the fashion world has been turned on its head and what is acceptable now would never be acceptable 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Jeans were like the ultimate, like casual, digging in the dirt, unacceptable to wear to the office like ever, special casual day. Don't you love working here because we let you wear jeans on Fridays type of taboo. Seriously, you could not get more dressed down than that. That is the shit category that jeans were in. Today, now is a completely different story. Jeans are the new black pants. You heard it here, folks, okay? Jeans are the new black pants. That doesn't mean don't have black pants. That means you can have just as many jeans as you can have black pants. How many jeans are too many jeans? I mean, it depends how much you wear them. If you never wear jeans and you hate jeans, you should still have two pair of jeans. And that's it. Because if you know you're like, I ain't getting my ass in a pair of jeans, I'm not doing it. 
you should still have two pair just in case. I really like jeans. I don't love them. Like they're my ultimate fashion go-to style staple. I really, really like them. I don't really, really, really love them, but I like them quite a bit. I have about, I would say 26 to 27 pairs of jeans, maybe less, but I do have a lot because I love the wax coated jeans. I love colored denim. You will not catch my ass in a white pair of jeans. I've tried. I don't like it. So I stopped wearing those. But I do have lots of different styles and types of jeans. I also have leather jeans, which obviously are leather pants, but I have faux leather that are considered jeans. And then I have real leather. So I put those in the jean category as well because they're made by these denim companies. But I have a lot of jeans because I can get away with it and I like to dress them up. Do you need 27 pairs of jeans? Probably not. Could you have 12? Yeah, probably. And it's the same thing. Purge the ones that you don't love and only keep the best of the best. Styling them with cowboy boots, sneakers, sandals, and heels. Those are looks that I have worn as of late. And depending on the rise of the jean really depends on the top I'm going to choose. So it might be a crop top. When I say a crop top, I don't literally mean a crop top. I mean a top that meets the top waist of my pants, right? Something that's going to show off my waist. I definitely love that look with an oversized blazer, a blouse alone, or an oversized sweater, cropped of course, duh, with a chunky boot. All of that is acceptable. I really love a rock and roll look with like a band t-shirt. I'm not going to, I'm personally not going to wear a band t-shirt, but you know, if you do, if you have like a Ramones t-shirt or like a Bruce Springsteen, that's pretty cool. You can wear that with a kimono and layered necklaces, like a lot of layered necklaces and a stiletto. I love that look too. Um, Also, y'all have heard me talk about this before. I love bodysuits. That's my jam lately, especially in the summer. And that could be worn alone or with a jacket as well. In the summer, I love a halter or a backless top with jeans. Love that too. A t-shirt is fine with jeans. Just make sure it's a nice quality, streamlined t-shirt that fits. And it's not oversized, so it doesn't look like you're trying to hide. So y'all heard my top flip-flops, linen pants, and t-shirts. Go back and listen to that episode if you want to know more about t-shirts. You can certainly wear a tank top as well. And don't forget, if you're getting dressed up to go out to anywhere, a bag is part of your outfit. Get a cute clutch if you're going to create a look with jeans at night. I mean, daytime too. But I'm just saying, if you're going out at night, make sure you change your bag. There are so many ways to liven up jeans with accessories like statement jewelry, stack bracelets, fabulous shoes, blase, blase. The list goes on and on and on. I have also seen people in a very tasteful, artistic way add patches and really cute bling like stones and sequins to their jeans as well. Make sure you style them up. Even if you're not dressing up per se, you can still look nice by having the right accessories and jewelry to make it look like a cohesive outfit, which is really the goal. Even if you are dressed down a bit, it's okay. If you're like, I'm just going here and you just, you don't really want to be dressed up. If you have on the right jewelry and cute shoes, it looks like a cohesive outfit and you don't have to try that hard is my point. For more styling tips and jean inspiration, make sure you hit me up, holly at fashioncrimespodcast.com or DM me on Instagram. Let me know what you have questions about. Even if you take a picture and post it in your cute jeans, please tag Fashion Crimes Podcast on Instagram and you're going to get a shout out. I mean, I don't know how your day can get any better. Speaking of shout outs, we got some shout outs this week. (laughs) Shout outs. We love a shout out. Shout out to Jane, Zeta, and Angela for writing in. They all had different fashion questions. Also, Caroline and Terry. I want to give a special shout out to Chris. <laughs> so Chris, she called me out when I interviewed my bestie, Jenny Fitstar, and we were talking about workout shoes. I said Nike. And she was like, no, girl, it's Nike. And she's like, I live in the Pacific Northwest. That's where they're headquarters. That's not how you say it. And I was like, girl, you're right. However, we're from the South and we say pecan and cement. Okay. And she's like, um, sorry, not sorry. 
So after I explained that I couldn't help it and I would try to do better, she was like, I'm just looking out for you. I was like, believe me, I appreciate that. So shout out to Chris for picking on me for my Southern accent. I still say Nike, but Chris, I will say Nike from now on because of you. Okay. Thank you for the correction. Shout out to Joellen and to Kim. Kim was saying that she's also little in the middle with she has much back. She was asking me about workout leggings. Shout out to Christine. She got a bathing suit from Billy Blonde. I'm loving that journey for you. And if you missed that episode, please go back and listen to episode 145. We love Gila from Billy Blonde. What's up, Gila? Next week, we have the staff. Listen to this, y'all. We have the staff from the Swimsuit Mega Brand Swimsuits for All, one of my very favorite swimsuit brands. And the video of me interviewing them in the main headquarters in Manhattan. That was a fabulous day, I must say. Can't believe they let me in, but they did. So make sure you tune in next week for that, as that's going to be amazeballs. Can't wait for y'all to hear that and to see what you think. They have some adorable styles this season. And just so you know, I'm going to be doing some videos with a few of their styles. If you see me in a bathing suit, okay, don't pass out. I'm going to be in their supermodel over 45 category. Just kidding. I do have a couple of their styles and I'm going to be taking a few videos and talking about what I like and what I don't like. So stay tuned for that. If you could please leave us a review, that would be dope. Can you just do it? That would be balls on Apple Podcast. I would be most grateful, to be honest. And I'm going to put a link right there in the show notes of how to do that. And if you could sign up for our newsletter, please and thank you. That would be epic. And that way you get all of this free fashion content delivered straight to your inbox every single week. P.S. I got all of this information from the Levi Strauss and Company website and Harper's Bazaar magazine. So thank you to them for their insight and try some Levi's. Let me know what style you get or if you already have some, let me see it and how you style it. Send me a pic so you can get a shout out. I mean, that's the ultimate goal here, y'all. And happy birthday, Levi's 501s. Happy birthday. We are so happy to celebrate you. And y'all, reading the history of this company, it's just incredible what they've done and the work that they do. Forget the genes. I mean, they're all about inclusivity and community and inspiration. At least they look great on paper. I don't know what it's like to work there, but I'm sure it's just as great. This has been your favorite personal stylist. As always, the only Holly you need to know and your very favorite personal stylist. Thank you so much for listening this week. We cannot wait to talk to Christina and to Brian of Swimsuits for All next week. Share with someone you love. Don't forget to leave us a review and make sure you vote for us for the podcast awards under the arts category. Thank you. Y'all have a fabulous week. Make sure you keep in touch with me and let me know how you're doing. Can't wait to hear from you. Y'all have a great week, a fashionable week, a fabulous week. Bye.